everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Maria, sir, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible to you, sir? Maria, sir, can you hear me? Good afternoon, Maria Prasad. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Shall we start the session, sir? Right. Yes, sir. We can start, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. SSMRV College, one of the premier institutions run by the prestigious RV group of institution, is known for initiatives to conduct various academic, cultural, and other activities for faculties and students frequently. Today, all of us are gathered here for a guest lecture on the topic value-based management for the subject advanced financial management. Today, we have our resource person, Dr. B. Maria Passer, who is head of the department, BMS College for Women. I, Vijay Lakshmi R, assistant professor, Department of Commerce, take this opportunity to welcome our beloved principal in his absentia, Dr. S. Anil Kumar sir, who is a real strength behind every initiative. Our resource person, Dr. B. Maria Passa, qualified with MCOM, MBA, ICWI, MPhil, and PhD, presently working as assistant associate professor, head of the Department of Commerce, BMS College for Women, Bengaluru. He is a hard worker, popular personality, and an established commerce teacher in Bengaluru. He has pursued doctorate degree on the topic, impact and effectiveness of activity-based costing in Indian manufacturing industries and empirical study. His contributions to the field of research is enormous. He presented and published various research papers in leading national and international journals. He has been invited as a resource person for various workshops, national level seminars, international conferences. Sir has got expertise knowledge in the field of commerce and management. He authored many books on various subjects like financial accounting, management accounting, cost accounting, taxation, mm -hmm. financial management, statistics, business mathematics, accounting and information system, and the like. So, on behalf of RVNs, I cordially invite you to the guest lecture, sir. Thank you very much for being a resource person with us. So, it is also, it is also my pleasure to welcome our head of the department and IQAC coordinator, Dr. Nagraj MS, coordinator of final year BCom, Dr. N. Shalini Madam, head of the different departments, faculty members, and last but not the least, I cordially invite all my dearest students to this knowledge gaining session. Over to you, sir. Once again, on behalf of SSMRV College, warm welcome to you, sir. Please take over the session. Thank you, madam. <clears throat> At the outset, I thank the management, principal, and HOD of Commerce and the coordinator, uh, Vijay Lakshmi Madam, for organizing this uh, uh, session on value-based management. So this is one of the important uh, topic in advanced financial management where you are supposed to learn 
what is this value based management what are the approaches like markan approach alkar approach mac kinsey approach steven stewart approach bcg approach and also balanced score card now in this session let me discuss few important aspects namely the concepts of value based management so that it will help you to solve problems on uh, calculation of economic value added namely eva before we proceed to eva let me discuss or let me give some introduction about what is this value based management see value based management is the management philosophy value based management is the management philosophy and approach that enables and support maximum value creation in organization i think in the first uh, financial management the basic goals of financial management here is profit maximization and wealth maximization so that wealth maximization is nothing but value based management that is maximizing the shareholders wealth maximizing the shareholders value so value based management i told you it is a management philosophy and approach that enables and supports maximum value creation in organization typically the maximization it is uh, value based management is maximization of shareholders value maximization of shareholders value value based management consists of a different process like creating managing measuring value so in total we can say value based management is the management approach or the management philosophy that supports maximum value creation in organization so remember if you want to create maximum that is a if you want to maximize value right so uh, it says that the organization should define what they consider value to be say unless we know what is to be maximized we cannot maximize so that means the organization should define what they consider value in the organization so generally or usually the organization usually defines value as a shareholders value so the value based management is all about maximizing the shareholders value now why it is important when we say value based management is important we should know what are its benefits what are its benefits so coming to <coughs> the first uh, and also very important uh, benefit of value based management is maximize value creation consistently so the organization should maximize the value creation consistently and second important uh, object of, uh, what we say the benefit of value man, uh, value based management is it increases corporate transparency this see in today's world the transparency is very very important so with the help of value based management we can increase corporate transparency so value based management also helps the organization deals with globalized and deregulated capital markets so that means when any company wants to stock wants to sell their stock in a international stock market so this helps them 
It helps the organization to deal with globalized and deregulated capital markets. So uh, that is value-based management also arranges the interest of managers with the in, uh, interest of shareholders and stakeholders. Arrange the interest of top managers with the interest of shareholders and stakeholders. So this also facilitates communication with investors, analysts, and also with other stakeholders. So now there are many more benefits of this. One is uh, prevent undervaluation of stock. It sets clear management priorities. That means what the management is supposed to do. It facilitates to improve decision making. It helps the it helps to balance short term, middle term, and long term trade offs. Encourages value creating investments. Value creating investments improves the allocation of resources. So any company, resources are limited. So value-based management helps us in uh, to improve the allocation of resources. And uh, it streamlines planning and budgeting. So it facilitates the use of stock, stocks for mergers or acquisitions, prevents takeovers. So there are so many benefits of value-based management. So now, why is value-based management is important? I told you just now, the market for its products and services, market for corporate management and control, capital market and employees and managers market. So for all these things, value-based management is important. Now let us go to the various approaches, what you're supposed to study. The first one is mark an approach. So uh, value-based management is mark an approach. Mark an approach or model was developed by mark an associates. This is a management consulting firm known for its work in the field of value-based management. According to Mark and model, a firm's value is measured by the ratio of its market value to book value. So the shares market value and book value. We determine the ratio between these two. I think all of you know what is market value and what is book value. When I say market value, we mean, when we say market value, we mean the price quoted in the stock market. The price of our company shares in the stock market is called market value. Book value means the book value of assets minus liabilities divided by number of shares, we will come to know the value that is called book value of share. So now this Markan model is based on, on the firm, it is model, a firm's value is measured, a firm's value is measured by means of a ratio called market value to book value. An increase in this ratio depicts an increase in the value of the firm. When you calculate the ratio between market value and book value, if there is increase in this ratio, that depicts, that means that shows an increase in the value of the firm. A reduction, a reduction in this ratio reflects a reduction in the firm's value. The model further states that this Markan model further states that a firm can maximize its value by following the following steps. The first step to the first step is 
understand the financial factors that determines for whose value. So when I say financial factors, when I say financial factor, this model states that the firm's market value to book value ratio, and hence its value depends on three factors. One is called return on equity. When we have invested money, how much returns the equity shareholders is expecting? Cost of equity, at what rate equity funds are obtained? and growth rate. So these three factors are called financial factors which determines the value of your firm. So according to this model, uh, this uh, model establishes the relationship between these three, namely return on equity, cost of equity, and growth rate. The this conclusion is drawn indirectly from constant growth dividend discount model. Thus, a firm's market value to book value ratio can be derived from its return on equity, its cost of, cost of equity, and growth rate. So second important factor, uh, that is uh, uh, the firm's market value will be higher than its book value only if its returns on equity is higher. Only if the return on equity is higher. That means when we have invested money, the return what we are getting is more than the cost at which the funds are, equity funds are obtained. So this is supported by other theories of valuation of equity. When return on equity is higher than cost of equity, the higher the firm's growth rate, the higher its market value to book value ratio. Hence, a firm should have positive spread between return on equity and the cost of equity and the high growth rate in order to create value or its value or its shareholders. So now the first factor I told you, understanding the financial factor that determines firm's value. So here financial factors means I told you three things. One is called return on equity, another one called cost of equity, and the third one is called growth rate. So if the return on equity is higher than cost of equity and with high growth rate, which creates more value. This is the first one. Now the second one, uh, the understanding strategic forces that affect the value of the firm. The strategic forces here, financial factors that affect the firm's value are in turn affected by some strategic forces. The financial factors, what I told you, these three things, right, affects a firm's value are in turn affected by these three factors are affected by some strategic forces. The two important strategic factors that affects firm's value are market economics and competitive position. The market economics determines the trend of the growth rate and the spread between return on equity and cost of equity for it for the industry as a whole. So industry means this firm, for which firm's value we are determining. So the, for that which industry this firm is belongs. So that means the market economics determines the trend of the growth rate trend of the growth rate and the spread between return on equity and cost of equity for the industry as a whole the firm's competitive position in the industry determines its relative rate of growth and its relative spread so market economics refers to the forces that affect prospects of the industry. When I say market economics means the forces 
that affects prospects of the industry. So the industry, I told you, all the firms constitute industry. So industry has evolved. So this includes level of entry barriers. That means any firm can enter and any firm can leave. So level of entry barriers, level of exit barriers, degree of direct competition, degree of indirect competition, number of suppliers, kinds of regulations, and so on. So, uh, and the customer's influence, etc. So the competitive position refers to firm's relative position within the industry. So what is the position of this firm within the industry? A firm's relative position is affected by its ability to produce. It is its ability to produce differentiated products. That means what are the kinds of products and how our products are different from our competitors in the industry. It's economic cost position. A product can be referred to as a product when the consumer perceives the quality to be better. When you say your product is better than the product and are ready to pay the product is superior than your competitor, the customers are ready to pay more. So, differentiate a product in two ways. So, if you say your product is better than your competitor, how this is beneficial to your firm? So, coming to this, the ability to produce differentiated product improves a firm's relative position. In other words, the other factors that helps a firm to enjoy strategic advantage over the competitor is a low per unit. That means if they produce the good quality product at lower cost, that is low per unit economic cost. Economic cost includes operating cost and cost of capital employed. A low economic cost may result from number of factors like access to, that means how can you reduce your cost? That, that is, depends on many factors. One is access to cheaper sources. You should get the funds at the lowest possible rate. That is one thing. Second one, uh, cheaper uh, raw materials. That means you should find out suppliers who can supply better quality at lowest rate. Next one, so the state of art of technology, that is what kind of technology you are using. So that also results in low economic cost and better management. So the, because of these four factors, one can achieve low economic cost. So that means your product is good, your cost is low. That means compared to your competitors, your product is preferable. So if your product is preferable, definitely it creates value in the organization. Coming to the first standing financial factors, second one, understanding strategies, and the third one, formulation of strategies. Once a company has identified its potential growth prospects, that means if your company identifies its growth prospects, and analyze its strength. That means, oh, what is the future for your company? And what are your strengths? And what are your weaknesses? It needs to develop strategies that would help to uh, utilize the strength and uh, <coughs> underplay its weaknesses. So, thus, achieving the maximum possible growth and creating value so this is uh, the third one. The fourth important one, namely creation of internal structures. The separation of ownership and management in the traditional manner results in 
the managing management bearing all risks associated with value based decision value adding decisions without their enjoying any of the benefit this often results in the management taking sub optimal decisions a firm needs internal structures which can control the uh, this tendency of management so this may include management's compensation being linked to the company's performance corporate governance mechanism corporate governance mechanism that specify responsibilities and holds managers uh, accountable for their decisions resources allocation among the projects and uh, mechanism for making sure that the various projects undertaken uh, form part of strategy rather than being disjoint discrete projects so this uh, things uh, plans being made in accordance with the long term goals and target performance being fixed in accordance with these plans rather than the level of achieving targets uh, so performance target should be a function of the plan rather than being a base for the plan so target performance when achieved should be rewarded with promised incentives non fulfillment of such promises affects future performance so this is what uh, the alker says sorry uh, markan says so the ratio is important here market value to book value so this uh, increase in market that is this ratio results in value maximization and decrease in this ratio results in decrease in the value so the value maximization is influenced by four important factors that is there are four steps in maximizing one is understanding the financial factors understanding the stick forces forming strategies and creating internal structures to counter the uh, divergence between the shareholders goals and management goals so coming to second approach alker approach say this alker model developed by alker group a company into management education and software development this alker group is a company engaged in management education and software development so this company uses discounted cash flow analysis to identify value adding strategies so when we said discounted discounted cash flow analysis that means this based on this based on uh, identify that is determining the value uh, by using time value of money discounted cash flow analysis measures the future value in terms of uh, discount factor namely pv factor according to alper approach of value based management a strategy should be implemented if it generate additional value for a firm so whatever the strategy you design that should be implemented if it generates additional value for a firm the value of equity is arrived by by deducting the market value of the firm's debt from its present value so you need to calculate the present value of the firm 
from that you deduct the present value of its debt so then we get present value of equity that means the value of equity is arrived by deducting the market value of the firm's debt from its present value according to alcor model of value based management there are seven value drivers that affects the firm's value so according to these are the seven value drivers that affects firm's value one is growth rate of sales second one operating profit margin that means for every 100 rupees sales what is the pro profit earned and the income tax rate that is how much tax the company is supposed to pay incremental investment in working capital incremental investment in fixed assets and value growth duration and cost of capital so these are the seven uh, drivers which affects the firm's value so the first six factors that is growth rate of sales operating profit margin income tax rate then in incremental investment in working capital incremental investment in fixed capital and value growth duration these six factors affect the value of the strategy for the firm by determining the cash flow generated by a strategy the last one namely cost of capital that affects the value of the strategy by determining the present value of these cash flows so now i told you the present value of cash flows is called the total value of the firm so from this if you subtract the market value of debt we will come to know the value of equity so now according to alcor approach the value alcor approach of value based management a strategy should be implemented if it generates additional value for your firm whatever the strategy if you want to implement remember it should generate some value it should generate additional value for your firm for ascertaining the value generating cap capability of a strategy the value of firm's equity without the strategy is compared with the value of the firm's equity if strategy is implemented that means you need to find out the value of the firm's equity before or without implementing the strategy and again you find out the value of the firm if strategy is implemented so you compare this so these two the strategy is implemented that is when you compare these two the strategy is implemented if later is higher than the former that means if the value after implementing strategy compare value before implementing strategy then the strategy may be implemented so other strategy should in steps are undertaken for making the comparison i told you you need to compare the value of the firm before implementing strategy the value of the firm after implementation of strategy if the value is more after implementation of strategy then compared to the value before implementation so for this purpose how how to find out the value before implementation the value of the firm after implementation of strategy so the following steps are undertaken to make this comparison calculate the value of firm's equity without the strategy being implemented and second one calculate the value of strategy is implemented so now while calculating the value the present value of expected cash flows of the firm is calculated using the cost of capital cost of capital is called pv factor use the present value factor find out the expected that is the present value of expected cash flows 
the cash flows uh, the cash flow should take the normal growth rate and its effect on operating flow and additional investment in fixed asset and working capital into consideration cost of equity should be the weighted average cost of capital that means the cost of all the sources put together so that is um, you should consider the weighted average cost of capital as cost of equity and accordingly you find out the uh, present value of the future cash flows or expected cash flows so now the value of equity is arrived by deducting the market value of the firm's debt from its present value i'll just repeat calculate the first step in uh, <coughs> alcor approaches calculate the value of firm's equity without applying strategy so how to calculate means future cash flows into cost of equity or pb factor you multiply and find out the value from this value you deduct the market value of the firm's debt then we will come to know the present value of equity so this is calculated i told you before taking before take implementing strategic step is calculate the value of firm if strategy is being implemented once again the firm's cash flows are calculated over the value uh, over the value growth duration taking into consideration the growth rate generated by the strategy by implementing strategy what is the growth rate in generating cash flow and take that and again multiply by cost of capital that is cost of capital once again we mean we will come to know the value value of the firm so once again from value of debt you detect the market value of will come to know or we will arrive at the post strategy value of equity post strategy means after implementing strategy how much is the value the value of strategy is given by the difference between that is the value of the strategy now we have implemented the strategy how to determine the value of strategy the value of strategy is given by the difference between post strategy or pre strategy value of equity a strategy should be accepted if it generates positive value so i told you you find out the value of equity before strategy being implemented you find out the value of equity when strategy is being implemented and take the difference between these two values if the value is positive then uh, a strategy should be accepted if the value is negative the strategy should be rejected so this is what the the second approach says namely alcor approach so alcor this is based on discounted cash flow analysis discounted cash flow analysis so that means uh, you find out the value of the firm value of the firm by um, multiplying future cash flows with discount factor or cost of equity cost of equity we mean weighted average cost of capital weighted average cost of capital then find out the total value so from that deduct the market value of debt we will come to know the value of equity this is before implementation of strategy and again in the same way you calculate the value of equity after it is being implemented then take value of equity is first implementation is first is higher than the value of equity of pre implementation so if it is positive then accept the so coming to kinsey model of valuation of value based management 
So, McKinsey model developed by leading management consultants, uh, McKinsey and Company, is a comprehensive approach to value-based management. This approach is based on the discounted cash flow principle, which is a direct measure of value creation. So, uh, McKinsey model of value-based management focus on, focuses on identification of key values, identification of key value drivers at various levels of the organization and places emphasis on these value drivers on all the areas, that is, in setting up of targets, in various management processes, in performance measurement, etc. Value-based management is a model that allow managers to run a business focusing on creation, improvement, and delivery of value. According to uh, McKinsey, the key steps maximizing the value of firm are according to him, there are six steps in maximizing the value of a firm. The first one, identification of value maximization. Identification of value maximization as the supreme goal. Second step is identification of the value drivers. The third one, development of strategy. So first you need to identify identification of value maximization as the supreme goal. That means that should be there in your mind. Then you should identify the identification of value drivers. So which uh, things which maximizes the company uh, value. Then develop strategy, setting targets, deciding upon the action plan. Then finally, setting up the performance measurement system. Now let us see one by one. According to McKinsey, the first one of value maximization as the supreme goal. A firm may have many conflicting goals. That means any company, you, for that matter, will be having many goals, like maximization of profit after tax, maximization of market share, achieving consumer satisfaction. So like this, every company will have different goals. The first step in maximizing the value of your firm is to make it the most important goal for the organization. Among all these goals, which is most important? So remember, the first step is identification of the value maximization as the supreme goal. So now I told you, organizations will have many goals. Maximization of profit after tax, maximization of market value of share, maximization of consumer satisfaction, and so on. So now here, in order to maximize the value of a firm, in order to maximize the value of a firm is to make it more Im most important goal for the organization. So in order to maximize this among these goals, which is more important, it is generally reflected in maximizer discounted cash flow. That means when you calculate the discounted cash flow, that means future value of cash flows, if that value is maximum, that is generally reflected in maximizing discounted cash flows. The organization activities can be classified into financial and non-financial types. 
the farmer, that means the first one, helps the senior management sustain focus, while the later motivates the entire workforce. So, non-financial activities includes product development, customer satisfaction, quality improvement, so which are normally consistent with the financial goal of value maximization. In case of conflict between finance and non-financial goals, financial goals are given importance. So coming to the second step, identification of the value drivers, the most important factor that affects the value of your business are referred to as key value drivers. It is necessary to identify these variables for value-based management. So the value drivers need to be identified at various levels in the organization so that the personnel at all levels can ensure that their performance is in accordance with the overall objective. So every person should ensure that his performance is in accordance with the overall objective. The other objectives of the firm mentioned above may act as a value drivers to some level of the organization. So the third step here is generic level. At this level, variables that reflect the achievement or non-achievement of the value maximization objective most directly are identified. These may be the uh, return on capital employed, or operating margin, or the net profit margin. The next step is departmental level. At this level, variables and, uh, that guide the department towards achieving the overall objective are identified. And uh, next one, the grassroots level. At the grassroots level, the variables that affect the performance at the operational level are identified. So this may be the level of capacity utilization and cost of managing inventory. So coming to the third one, development of strategy. The next step is to develop strategies at all levels of the organization. So which are consistent with the goals of uh, value maximization and leads to achieve, achievement of the same. The strategy, the strategy should be aimed at and give direction for the achievement of the desired level of the key value drivers. The fourth step is setting up targets. Development of strategies is followed by setting up of specific short-term and long-term targets. These should be specified in terms of the des desirable level of key value drivers. Short-term targets should be in tune with long-term targets. So, the targets for the various levels of organization should be in tune. That means it should go hand in hand. They should be set both for financial as well as non-financial variables. So deciding upon the action plan is the next step. Once the strategy is in place, and targets have been determined, there is a need to specify the particular action that are required to be undertaken to achieve the targets. So once this is decided, the next step is setting up the performance measurement system. The future performance of personnel is affected by 
the way of the performance measure to a large extent hence it is essential to set up a precise and unambiguous performance measurement system a performance measurement system should be linked to the achievement of targets and should reflect the characteristics of each individual department so value based management focuses on value creation but managers can take it only for shareholders value but also for value creation that can benefit shareholders so value based management focus on value creation but manage managers can take it not only for shareholders but also value creation for that can benefit shareholders develop developing uh, communities to markets where firms compete can become an important driver of value creation to achieve uh, superior performance so this is what is uh, called uh, kinsey model of value based management so e mac kinsey creation one is identification of maximization of as the supreme goal identification of the variables development of strategy setting up target deciding upon the action plan and setting up the performance measurement system so with these seven steps one can able to determine the value and which is the man. so coming to the fourth a stern steward approach so this is also called as economic value added method economic value added method economic value add uh, value added eva is a holistic method of evaluating a company's financial performance which means that eva is used not only a valuation technique but also to find the economic contribution of a company to the society at large so in what way the company is contributing to the society at large core concept behind eva is that company generates value only if there is creation of value in terms of returns in excess of its cost of capital when i say returns here we mean net profit after tax so that should be more than the cost of capital invested eva insists on separation of firms operations from its financing so if company's eva is negative it means the company is not generating any value not generating value from the funds invested into the business on the other hand if eva is positive shows a company is producing value from the funds invested in it so for calculation of eva for calculation of eva we have totally five steps and remember if you want to solve problems on this approach namely economic value added in every problem you need to calculate the first one net operating profit after tax shortly we call it as nopat net operating profit after tax so that means you need to calculate operating profit what is operating profit operating profit means sales minus operating cost when you did it sales minus operating cost we call it as operating profit in other words it is called as ebit so from ebit directly you deduct the tax 
you will be getting net operating profit after tax. But while calculating operating cost, if, if there is any item called non-cash item, like depreciation or provision for doubtful debts, etc., you need to add back. I'll just repeat, the first step in calculation of EVA, the first step in calculation of EVA is calculation of net operating profit after tax. How to calculate means sales minus operating cost, we get operating profit. In other words, it is called as EBIT. So from EBIT, directly you calculate tax on EBIT. We, after deducting the tax, you, know, you if there is non-cash items like depreciation or provision for doubtful debts, etc., that should be added back because there is no outflow of cash as such. So thereby we get net operating profit after tax. This is first step. Any problem on EVA, your second step is calculation the total capital invested. So just remember all of you, what is your second step means you need to calculate the total capital invest. So for this, you can use either liabilities base or assets base. When use liabilities base, how to calculate total investment? Take the shareholders fund called share capital and resource and surplus and add non-current liabilities. Add non-current liabilities so that we get total capital employed. If we use assets base, if you use assets base, then uh, you need to take non-current assets, then take current assets, thereby you'll be getting total assets. So from this, you deduct the you deduct non-interest bearing liabilities. That means for those liabilities where there is no need to pay interest. In other words, it is called current liabilities. So take non-current assets, take current assets, take the total of these two, deduct non-current liabilities, you will be getting capital employed, total capital invested, or total invested capital. This is the second step in coming to the third one. You need to find out, you need to find out the weighted average cost of capital, WESC. How to find out weighted average cost of capital? The proportion of each source into specific cost. So what is the proportion of equity into specific, cost, into specific cost of debt? When I say specific cost of debt, we mean after tax cost. That is post tax debt. So when you calculate cost of equity plus cost of debt. Together we call it as, together we call it as weighted average cost of capital. So now the first step, calculate net operating profit after tax. Second step, calculate total capital invested, either use asset space or liability space. The third one is calculate weighted average cost of capital, I think, all of you have learned this in first module. Coming to the fourth step, calculation of capital charge. How to calculate capital charge means multiply the total capital invested by weighted average cost of capital. Multiply total capital in total capital employed into weighted average cost of capital. We get capital charge. And finally, the fifth step is calculation of economic value added, EVA. How to calculate EVA means net operating profit after tax minus net operating profit after tax minus capital charge. Minus capital charge, we will come to know, we will come to know the economic value added. So you may ask, what are the advantages of this? So there are many advantages of economic value added. So
Hello? Sir, you are audible. One second. One second. Okay, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Sir, we can hear you. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, I, I just explained this so far. There are five steps. There are five steps in calculation of EVA. Your first step is calculation of net operating profit after tax. And I told you just now, EBIT minus tax, add back any non-cash items or non-cash items of expenses. Then second step is calculation of total capital employed. I told you, you can calculate this either assets base or liabilities base. And the third step is you need to calculate weighted average cost of capital. That means each sources into specific cost. If you multiply these two, we get product. Total product divided by total weight. Weight means proportion of each source. We get weighted average cost of capital. The fourth step is capital charge. How to calculate capital charge means capital invested into weighted average cost of capital. Once if you know the capital charge, then you deduct capital charge from net operating profit after tax. Deduct <coughs> net operating profit, net operating profit after, um, a net operating, uh, that is uh, capital charge from net operating profit, we get EVA, economic value added. So I told you, what are the uses of this economic value added? So uh, EVA can be used uh, for the following purposes. One is setting up organizational goals, performance measurement, determining uh, uh, motivating of managers, capital budgeting, corporate valuations, and analyzing equity secures, one can use EVA. <clears throat> uh, based on, uh, uh, we have discussed this even in uh, um, the orientation program, you can expect problems only on EVA. Other four items what we discussed, namely Mark and Butter, so these things, these things only only you need to the aspects of these three approaches and only this theory and consequences use all the varieties and learn these um, so that this will help you in the examination. So I think uh, 
have covered in detail all the uh, approaches uh, one is uh, markan approach alkar approach uh, uh, stern stewart approach it is called uh, aspectia one is called uh, <coughs> balancer score and one more is called bcg approach so bcg approach is a group approach baston uh, consulting group approach was proposed by baston consulting group so two concepts are at the base of this approach one is total shareholders return another one total business returns so for applying these con two concepts uh, applying these two can use one is cash flow return and investment another one cash flow uh, cash value added so you just go through this uh, bcg approach western consulting group approach one basic concept one you may get a two marks question on this particular aspect so coming to last one balance score card the balance score card performance metric use the business functions and the resulting external to So any queries or any questions from students? See, in valuation management, you need to know the introduction part and what are the benefits and advantages of valuation management. One is first one morakan approach second one alkar approach third one mac kinsey approach stern stewart approach called ev approach then bcg approach and finally balancer scoka and from practical point of view from practical point of view learn only Hello. The voice is being sir. Hello. Sir, can you hear me? Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Ask the student to ask any doubts. Any approaches here? One is before. For B plus plus six approaches, the students are supposed to know what is value based management and why it is important, and how the shareholders value is created by using Markan approach, Alkar approach, 
Kinsley approach, Stern Stewart approach, BCG approach, and Balance Poker. And I told problems can be asked only on how to determine the various stages of calculation of EVA, how to calculate how to retain profit after tax, how to calculate total capital employed and single liability spend. The third step, how to calculate weighted average cost of capital. And fourth step, how to find out capital charge. And finally, how to calculate EVA, economic value added. And uh, is the teacher is supposed to cover all varieties of problems on how to calculate EVA. I think no questions from students. I would like to conclude my session. And if you want uh, any materials on this aspect, I will definitely share the materials. So otherwise, so I once again thank the management uh, principal, Dr. Anil Kumar, and uh, uh, Madam Coordinator Vijay Lakshmi for giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, just uh, have some discussion on this is uh, the one of the important topic in the subject called advanced financial management. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for sparing your precious time with us. So it was a knowledge gaining session, sir. We have understood very clearly. Uh, you have uh, uh, said that you are going to share the materials. Kindly uh, send the materials to our email ID. We will share it to the students okay. sir. on behalf of. Definitely. Yes, sir. Yes. We do it. And once we discuss this over, the same materials I can share so that students, once if they go through the material, I think they can learn better all these uh, concepts clearly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will be a great help for us. So on behalf of principal, head of the department and the management and all the faculty members and my dear students, I once again thank you, sir. Thanks for giving this, I mean, giving this a beautiful lecture on value-based management. So we are grateful to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will conclude the session, dear students, dear participants. So thanks for your time. Have a great time.